In a newborn infant, the pupil was found to lack its musculature. Which of the following contribute to the formation of the pupillary muscles? The answer we're looking for here is ectoderm. Most muscles are mesoderm formed, but there are exceptions to this rule. And there's a few exceptions that are important for the USMLE Step 1 that you be aware of. The skeletal muscle sources uh, will have some exceptions to predominantly being mesoderm or somite formed. There's going to be some neuroectoderm derivatives, which will include the constrictors and dilators of the eye that we discussed in the question. And there'll be some ectodermal derivatives, which will be myoepithelial cells, such as the mammary glands and the sweat glands. An infant which is born with poorly controlled muscles of the back is likely due to a failure of the nerve to grow into the muscles appropriately. Which muscle forming structure gives rise to the extensors of the vertebral column? And for this answer, we're looking for E, the epaxial division of the myotome. And this question is calling up your, your uh, memory of the organization of those somites as they distribute into different body segments. It's the epaxial myotome that will be associated with the dorsal ramus and the true back muscles as well as the skin overlying them, whereas all of the ventral rami will give rise to the hypaxial muscle, and those will give uh, supply to the dermatomes and the myotomes of all of the other muscles around the body and the limb. When you break that down, the epaxial are going to be innervated by dorsal primary rami of spinal nerve, and the hypaxial will be innervated by the ventral primary spinal nerves. That's an important concept to remember because it applies to a lot of the understanding that will come with the brachial plexus and the lumbosacral plexus. An Another division importance is that the extensor muscles tend to be from dorsal development and the flexor muscles tend to be from the more ventral development. However, it's a rotation of the limbs that put them on opposite sides in the adult form. Therefore, it's important to remember for the understanding of the limb in general that the upper limb is essentially the same as a lower limb except they're at 180 degrees of rotational difference. So the thumb, which in anatomical position is lateral, therefore has the big toe in the anatomical position being medial. 